Hi, I'm Donna Wilder. And I'm Janie Donaldson. Welcome to Quilt Central, where we celebrate quilting and everyday living. Today we'll be on location at the Paducah Flood Walls, where the beautiful murals come to life. We'll also do our quilting where we feature snippet art, and we're going to do surface design techniques on the long arm quilting machine. We're glad you joined us at Quilt Central. Funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilters Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. The Warm Company, manufacturers of products especially designed for serious quilters, crafters, and home sewers. Krause Publications, reaching and teaching crafters and hobbyists through special interest magazines, books, videos, and television. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Bernina of America, nothing sews like a Bernina, nothing. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style. Quilt Central, celebrating quilting in everyday living with your hosts Jane Donaldson and Donna Wilder. Our decorating theme today will take us into the dining room and we're going to be working with a, an adaptation of an antique pillar print. This has been the theme that we've used throughout the room. Notice the beautiful decoration around the window. The treatment here is quite exquisite and was perfect for that particular fabric. On the table, we're doing a table runner that we'll look at a little bit later on in the program. And then we've used two exquisite wall hangings. The first one is a bouquet of flowers. Here again, taking portions of that fabric and actually incorporating them right into the flower work. And then we're going to be doing a project, and it's a landscape. And this one, again, has just a wonderful feel to it. My guest today is Cindy Walter, representing Krause Publications and The Warm Company. She is also the author of More Snippet Sensations. Welcome, Cindy. Thank you, Donna. Nice to be here. What is snippets? Well, it's a way that I developed how to just freely paint with snippets of fabric. I'm a quilter from way back when, and I wanted to paint on my quilts, and well, so I came up with the whole snippet idea. Your landscape and the vase are absolutely beautiful. Thank you. Thank are we going to talk about how you do that sure. today? Sure. Let's get started then. Okay. For a landscape, we need something for the foundation. Mm -hmm. So I actually pieced a piece of sky fabric onto a foundation here. Then we need our different fabrics, a variety of blues for the water, uh -huh. a variety of green for the grass, and then some spark of color for the ground cover on the bottom. Do you usually use fabrics you have on hand, or do you go out specifically and purchase for a Well, a piece? being a quilter, of course, <laughs> I have a lot of scraps. <laughs> but I, you know, sometimes I purchase things for a specific piece. This matched the border fabric, so I purchased that because uh -huh. I wanted to put that spark in the, in the ground. And I specifically like fabrics that have a lot of color or movement versus fabrics that are solid. Okay. And there are so many like that read sort of like a solid, but they have all these variety of colors in right. them today, which is right. nice. It's, they're great. Good. The batiks, they're all wonderful. Next thing we need to do is prefuse our fabric. I use Steam Seam 2, which is mm -hmm. a double stick. I pull off one of the paper sides. And this is actually a pressure sensitive, is that what it, it is? It is, and so it's pressure sensitive, and I'll show you here how that works. Just set my fabric on there, and I would go ahead and trim out all four sides so I'm working right. with clean edges. Mm -hmm. But basically, I pull off the back paper when I'm ready to work, and there it is, oh pre-fused. So it's pressure sensitive. It is so easy. It's wonderful. And the other thing about it is the back side's pressure sensitive too. So I can literally put it in place uh -huh. and reposition it. Um, and it'll stay in place, and then when we're all done, we'll set it for 15 seconds to make that temporary bond permanent. How nice. If you want to do a quilt and you want to get some dimension, you can put it on the wall. And, and you garments. Yes. You can try it on. Perfect. Yeah, it's Perfect. great. So now that we have our fabrics ready and our I'll supplies all ready, the next thing we'll just start cutting. The secret to snippets is to be free. As quilters, we want to pre-measure and pre-draw uh -huh. everything, but we're just going to freely cut. 
So I pull well, out my paper. It has to be, you've been doing this for a while. Is it, can a beginner do something of like this? Of course. It? I always have beginners in my classes. And in Snippet Sensations, my original book, every project in there is from a beginner, their first project. So I wanted people to know that anyone can be creative with okay, fabric. Okay, show me how this is done. I'm using the front part of my mm -hmm. scissors, and I'm cutting right on the foundation. Oh, okay. It's just that simple. So if I was going to create water, I can cut long, thin snippets that are sweeping back and forth, such as this. And I like to interchange my fabrics in the colors, so I would mix my mix my colors mm -hmm. up to get that nice and by impression. Using it, it just act, is holding on by itself it's already. It's just pressure sensitive, and I can actually hold this up, and it just stays in mm -hmm. place. I'm going to interchange a few other colors in here. That thunk is like getting that right yeah. down there. Yeah, right on the secure. table. And then pat it down. Uh -huh. Once I finish my water, I would go ahead and start with the ground cover, and I mm -hmm. have it a little bit uh, finished here. Now, do you ever draw a design or a line, an area that you want to cover I in it? I don't, but I think that people should do whatever makes them more comfortable. Okay. So if you need to draw a line, go ahead, and it's just a matter of enjoying it. You uh -huh. know, to enjoy like yourself. It really and it really is fun. And I think the hardest thing is for us just to be free and just to try it. Let it go, right? Right. So I like to put down big pieces on the bottom, and mm -hmm. like here, I have some very large chunks down. And then on top of that, or around, I'll fill it in with smaller, tinier chunks, mm -hmm. and just to fill in the area. And, and so, that gives you dimension, moving mm -hmm. from the dar larger at the bottom up to the small right, at and the our, top. Right, and our tiny little precision pieces are right here covering the top, and I would just mix up the colors. And studying some of the old masters in their paintings, they mix up colors we normally wouldn't. So you'll notice in here I have olives and teals. Right. And it just gives us the wonderful impressionist type of a feel. It does. It has almost that Monet look it to it does, when you right. it. So once I've finished, um, let's just pretend I've got the ground already uh -huh. done. Once I'm all finished, I can add any other dimensions I want. I could cut perhaps some big, long stems to add some trees. And using the same dark color, um, so I would take the paper off and I could start putting some trees over there. Uh -huh. And perhaps with the uh, same dark color, I might build myself a church or some other type mm -hmm. of building. And let's say, let's just make this a city where I could have all different shapes buildings in here and squares. And, and I would just build it all up until it looks perhaps like this. Isn't and now I'm ready to get my spark in there. I need a little cover for the, a color for the tree. Mm -hmm. So I take my scraps of green and just freely cut once again. Notice, remember, I'm using... You make using, it look easy. It is once you just try. <laughs> That's great. And remember, use the front tip of your scissors and cut right down into place and just freely cut. And so I can just keep building my trees up like this and putting my... Uh, I would build my trees mm -hmm. nice and big, any size I want. And then for me... I like to have a little more spark in my project, so yes. I would go ahead and ground cover. Lots of little ground cover. I put flowers, maybe some nice red flowers down here. And it's just this simple and just this fast. Well, it looks like the flowers are growing on the finished piece. It those does. Lavenders and, you and you can the make colors. any type of um, any type of uh, flower gardens you want. And here, I could, maybe I'll make a pathway coming up to the church or uh -huh. up to the ground up here like this. Fun. And it's just that easy. I'm just simply painting with fabric. Of course, I would add a little purple in here and really spark this up. Maybe we'll have a little bit of a, a purple uh, field of lilac mm -hmm. right in here. Did you develop here. this technique? I did, I did. I was uh, lying in bed with insomnia, and <laughs> I wanted to, and I had already taught traditional uh -huh. quilting for way over a decade right. at that time, and I wanted to paint on my quilts. And oh, so it just great. came to me that I could put a fusible web on the back and just cut snippets to paint with, and there it now, is. Now, once you get this done, the next step is to the put next, your borders. Well, the next step would be to set it permanently. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'd use a hot steam iron, 15 full seconds okay. in each area. And don't iron, we're going to press. Just press down mm -hmm. on it. And, 15, and it's very important to set it the full amount of time. Unlike other webs, this one really wants its full uh, amount of steam or heat so that mm -hmm. you can uh, quilt and it later And after that, on. then there's no gumminess or anything. Right. You can go right if to the machine after right. the 15 seconds. That's right. So now at this point, once it's set, we can add our borders and we can frame it or we can turn it into a quilt, which I like to do, and we would be and ready. And you use the pillar fabric as your border around it. That's right. On this one, I use 
I used the fabric. And again, I like a little more spark. So I used a color, okay, perhaps good. a brighter or even maybe a, a rustier color in mm -hmm. there um, as my inside border and did a double framing border on that. Well, let's take a look at a couple of your other pieces. Great. These are spectacular. Tell us a little but about each one. I love to do one. landscapes. And of course, this is a Hawaii theme. I, I lived in Hawaii for over a decade, and this is built the same way. Nice piece of background with just yeah. random shaped snippets all around. Very this one easy. I love. This yeah. is. This, yeah. of course, I call a touch and van Gogh. Yes. And this is a very good lesson where I didn't copy the Starry Night painting per se, uh -huh. I just used the right colors. And the, stro the yes. tiny stroke yes. type and, movement and with the snippets. Yes, and all my snippets were cut long and thin, because yeah. he does long and thin sweeping it's brush wonderful, strokes. and it really does look It like was that. very easy, too. Now, this one looks very uh, kind of freeform. It is, and this came from my, my inspirations come from all my travels mm -hmm. and everywhere I go. And I taught in Montana, and this was the free picture of the tour guide when I left. Oh, so I just start, always start from your farthest away dimension, okay. work Move your it. way up, and, and end with the closest thing that you want oh, to pop up. That's great. And the last one that we have is certainly colors we like here. Yes. The and this, purples this and is created the same way as the one I taught you. And this the step-by-step -step for this is in my original Snippet Sensations book. Oh, it's great. Well, I, it's wonderful, and I think it's it's kind of a sense of freedom that people it can is. have. It is. So I want to yeah. thank you for joining well, us. Well, it's my pleasure. Thank you. And now let's go to Jane, who's going to show us some new techniques on the long arm quilting machine. If you love thread, you'll love ribbon work. Have you seen some of the new ribbon work? They run it right over the top of any kind of quilt, contemporary, whimsical, or traditional. And they even use it sometimes to change the color of a quilt that's an old quilt and you want to jazz it up a little. But anybody that loves thread will love ribbon work. We have a couple different things that we want to show you today about how to do ribbon work. When you look at this, it has a C shape, the letter C. And I know a lot of people wonder how that is done. And there are a couple different methods, but the method that I like is, I like to just take two pencils. My mother who paints china taught me how to do this. And you can twist and turn those pencils any way you like and get a ribbon pattern. And once you decide what shape you want the ribbons to fill, whether it's a rectangle or a triangle, you can play with the two pencils until you get the ribbon work twisting and turning just right. After you decide on your pattern, you can just have the pattern blown up with the copy machine. Or even if you think that you want to do it just a little bit larger, I have seen girls take two pencils and put a block of wood between with a rubber band around to space the pencils out a little wider in order to draw their ribbon work that way. Then how do you get the ribbon work design onto your fabric to go over the top? Now this is a hand painted piece. And you can use any one of the water-soluble mar marking pens and mark on here if you can see your tracing. Or I have put it right onto a piece of paper, and I outline with that. And I'll do a little bit of that, and I'll show you how easy that that paper tears away. through there. Now if you lose, use a little tinier of a stitch, you'll be able to perforate the paper a little better and you'll be able to get that off a little easier. But it does come off really easy. It just tears free. And you'll be able to work the area that you need to work. And you'll have your pattern outline right on there. Now, how do you fill it in? And how do you get it to change color and make it look more like a ribbon? Well, it's not too tricky. Usually, they put the dark color on one side or the other, and it doesn't matter which way you start. It's just nice if you have it follow through all the way through the ribbon work. I like to put the dark on the outside and have the light on the inside. 
And you can work this pattern any way that you like to. You can work it in circles or figure eights or back and forth. You can mix it up. But as long as you cover the fabric, I have seen where they have actually done so much thread work that the piece has dropped right out of the quilt. So you probably don't need to go that far. But I've also seen her repair that by putting a piece of organdy over both sides and continuing to do thread work around these designs and it held the piece in place. So I'll show you a little bit about how I shade this and I hope that you'll be able to see that on camera because I have a lighter pink on the inside now and I'll have a darker pink on the outside. And I just pour as many miles of thread into there as I can get. Takes a little bit of sewing, but eventually here you'll be able to see the center lighten right up. Are you seeing it change a little bit? If you see that you can um, pour a two shades into the same one, you can actually pour a metallic in or a variegated on one side. I find, found that if I use variegated all the way across that I kind of get mixed up with the color balance. So it works better just to use solid threads and then add a touch of metallic for sparkle. I don't know if you're seeing that quite yet. I would think you'd be able to see it a little bit now. There certainly are a lot of different kinds of threads on the market and I know if you girls love fabric and you're buying fabrics you're probably buying threads to match so this is one way to use up the tag ends of thread that you have is to build a piece of feather or ribbon work and keep it colorful and then you can use all the different threads that you have that are left over in your stash I wonder if you girls have thought about this on garments or in jewelry. I have seen it on different vests and jackets and I have also seen it when you make little thread pieces and wear them as earrings or brooches and that kind of thing. So thread work is really thread play and this kind of thing is really the bridge between the quilt world and the art world. The first time I saw these flood walls, I had to step right up to them and touch them because I wasn't sure if they were three-dimensional or not. I know the quality of the painting is so fantastic, you're not sure that they aren't real. Right. The Paducah wall-to-wall -wall is well worth seeing. Long before Paducah, Kentucky was known as Quilt City, it was called the River City. The mighty Ohio River meanders past Paducah, oblivious to the thousands who live on or near its banks. River transportation is an important part of Paducah's history and current economic health. This gray concrete wall protects Paducah from the ravages of flooding, but it wasn't always that way. It took a catastrophic flood in 1937 to convince Paducah that a flood wall was needed. The flood of 1937 did nearly $40 million worth of damage to Paducah, almost half a billion in today's dollars. The Ohio River crested at 17 feet above flood stage, causing the river to be seven miles wide. Paducah's flood wall is certainly utilitarian. It does its job and it does it well. Overall, it certainly isn't very attractive, but that is changing. American Quilter Society co-founder Bill Schrader decided Paducah's flood wall needed a facelift. And that's what it got. And then some. Bill had seen the work of muralist Robert Dafford and knew that was just what Paducah's flood wall needed. Each flood wall panel costs about $10,000 to undergo Dafford's magical transformation. 
so far, the flood wall murals have been paid for with private funds, and that's the plan for all future murals. The murals themselves are spectacular. Dafford subject matter for each mural is carefully selected by a citizen's panel who comb over old records and photographs so the murals reflect Paducah's rich and diverse history as accurately as possible. The Paducah flood wall murals are a perfect example of function and form coexisting. Echoes from the past take shape under Dafford's skilled touch, breathing life not only into history, but also into downtown Paducah. Today we're going to talk about thread painting and embroidery. And my guest is Karna Lackey, who is a sewing specialist for Bernina of America. Welcome, Karna. Thank you, Donna. I, I'm happy to be here. Well, I'm really impressed what you did on the table runner. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you. Um, the table runner features three main blocks that um, show off the motif in the fabric. They're bordered with uh, sashings and cornerstones. And in the triangles, there's um, bias strips that kind of make a lattice look, uh -huh. sort of like a trellis on flowers because of the beautiful floral print that we had to work with. Well, it's great. And I know they may not be able to see, but tell us how you did the free painting on top the free of... Motion? Yes. Um, a lot of people feel like, you know, I'm not an artist, I can't thread paint. Right. What you can do is you can start with beautiful fabrics such as this, apply a fusible web to the back, and trim out um, the motifs that you want to use that will okay. fit your needs. And then I've actually fused them to the block, and then um, I can show you exactly how we start. I want to see how you do this. All right. Um, to begin free motion, you always want to take one stitch down and one stitch up to lock off your threads. And you're going to pull out so that your bobbin thread is up, and you're going to tie it off with usually just some short straight stitches. Okay. And the one thing, um, when you do free motion, your feed dogs are down, so you are the machine. You are moving you are it moving to the it design. Totally. Uh -huh. Usually then I will switch to a zigzag stitch. Um, if I want to fill in some larger areas, that makes the filling go faster. And I simply am just moving. Now you're using a color that coordinates with that flower section. Yes. You change your colors then after you finish Very a often, hole. yes, very often. Now. Do you go out then and do the other areas in that same color thread? I usually do all of whatever is in my hoop. I will do all of those, all of that same color. Okay. Then I will change colors. Um, if I'm doing a large design and it's out of the hoop, I do everything in the hoop. Then move to move my hoop and start over again. Let's do a little more. All right. You can also do some things with just a straight stitch going back and forth. Uh huh. If and that's you want to highlight, down there. Uh -huh. it works real good. It just matches the fabric, and you. Like on the table runner, what we did was we actually highlighted certain areas of the fabric. You can also, in thread painting, do um, a solid piece where there's actually, you really don't even see the fabric that's left. That is neat. Well, let's stop there. I'm going to show them a couple of the projects, and you get ready to do the embroidery. Great. We'll Good. set it up. Thank you. This is fun. She did a sort of a note board, and again, using a pre-printed fabric, she did her embroidery stitches on top of that. And here we have this beautiful floral pillow. Again, one of those pre-printed fabrics that she thread painted all of the colors using that as her guide. Let's go back and see what the embroidery looks like. Okay, Donna, we've got the machine all set up and ready to go for embroidery. I've added the optional embroidery module, and this is one of the hoops that comes with it. Um, there's two hoops that come with it, and there are um, 25 built-in designs along with alphabets built into the machine. So you can scroll down, is that? Yeah, you will pick your embroidery module. You will select, these are the built-in designs. You'll select them, and as you see, they'll be coming up. Once they're up, you can scroll down through all the designs, and you can select the one you want. And as soon as it processes, then you're ready to go. And you simply press the button. And trim your thread and press the button again. And it's and just going to do the whole thing yes, all by itself. Yes, it does. It will actually, this is a single color design, so it's going to just do the whole design and stop. But if you had multiple colors, it would stop, allow you to change the thread, and you press the start button again, and then it does it all by itself. So for those people who say they can't do embroidery, it's all done for them. Very much so, very much so. And there's some beautiful cards you can buy. Um, if the built-in designs are not enough, you can buy additional cards that fit into the machine. There's quilting cards, um, floral cards, animal cards, anything you can want. And you can even scan your own designs, can't yes, you? Yes, you can. There's software available, and um, you can 
can scan in your own designs and they are sent over directly to the machine and then you can sew them out just like this. Well, it's wonderful. And let's stop and just show them how much we've gotten here. And you can stop at any time, can't you? And it'll just pick yes. up and continue yes. going. Um, and there's also a little eco feature, which, um, you know, if you're done at night, you're not really done with your embroidery, you can put your machine to sleep, wake it back up the next day. And it remembers everything. It's exactly where you started, and it's only at half time. This is what I need. It makes it... It is. It is. <laughs> well, I know it looks easy, and I know the thread painting looked easy, but I, you've had lots of experience, and it certainly shows in your work. Thank you very much. Visit the Quilt Central website at www.quiltcentraltv.com for more information on this program. Next week, we're going to be moving into the children's rooms, and our theme is all around clowns. We're so glad you joined us today. We'll see you next time on Quilt Central. Funding for Quilt Central has been provided by the American Quilters Society, dedicated to promoting today's quilter. The Warm Company, manufacturers of products especially designed for serious quilters, crafters, and home sewers. Krause Publications, reaching and teaching crafters and hobbyists through special interest magazines, books, videos, and television. Paducah McCracken County Convention and Visitors Bureau. Paducah, where no one is a stranger. Sulky of America, taking creativity to new heights with decorated threads, stabilizers, and books. Bernina of America, nothing sews like a Bernina, nothing. Quilting Machines International, providing quilting machines and supplies for the world. Free Spirit Fabrics, quilting fabrics with style.